Hey, I'm back and we're continuing on with the parables of Jesus. And today we're going to take a look at the Good Samaritan. If you've been a Christian for any length of time, you've probably heard the parable of the Good Samaritan, kind of already know the, the moral of the story, but we're going to take a look at it and hopefully look at some new aspects of it. So let's go ahead and read from Luke 10 verses 25 through 37. And it says, Behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered rightly. Do this, and you will live. But he, wanting to justify himself to Jesus, said, And who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, and when he arrived at the same place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine on him, and he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, He who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. So Jesus tells this parable in response to this lawyer's question of who is my neighbor? You know, in asking this question, you kind of have to wonder if this neighbor had some, or if this lawyer had in mind someone that he didn't want to have to love. So in Jesus telling this parable, he's kind of answering the question, who are we supposed to actually show, show love to? So Jesus starts off this parable with absolutely nothing surprising. You know, this man goes down on the road to Jericho and gets mugged, gets beaten. And this particular road was known for that. You know, it's not surprising. This was the bad part of town. This is where people get mugged. And so nothing surprising there. And then we have uh, a priest comes by and does nothing. And a Levite comes by and does nothing. And neither one of those are surprising. Um, both of these people have religious duties that they have to perform. And if they touch a body that could have been dead or if he was bloodied, they would be unclean and they wouldn't be able to perform their their services. And so, you know, the fact that they wouldn't be able to do their job might have kept them. Also, it might have been common that on this road, people set traps. Someone would act injured. And then when people came to help them, they would get mugged. And so there's kind of a lot of reasons, a lot of excuses that these two could have had for not helping. And perhaps some of the people may have even used those very excuses themselves for not helping people or not loving their neighbor. But then Jesus throws in a twist. You see, it wasn't just a common Jewish man that came to help. It was a social outcast. It was a Samaritan. And they were, they were racial outcasts. They were considered worse than Gentiles, even worse than dogs. And so this would have been a big twist for Jesus to have said that it was a Samaritan that came and helped this Jewish man off by the side of the road. And then Jesus asked the question, so which of these people was a neighbor to the man? But that wasn't the question that the lawyer asked. The lawyer didn't ask Jesus how to be a good neighbor or, you know, how do I show love to others? How am I a neighbor to someone? He asked, who is my neighbor? The lawyer wanted to know who he was responsible for loving, but Jesus responded in showing him how to be a neighbor to everyone, no matter what their uh, race is, no matter what their political affiliation is, no matter what their beliefs are, no matter who they are, Jesus showed them how to be a neighbor rather than answering the question, who is my neighbor? You see, Jesus did what Jesus always does. He takes things to the next level. Here's some other examples of Jesus taking things to the next level. He said things like, you've heard it said, don't murder, but I say, don't be angry. Or you've heard it said, don't commit adultery, but I say, whoever looks at someone with, with a lustful heart has already committed adultery. Uh, you've heard it said, don't swear falsely, but I say, don't swear at all. 
Uh, you've heard it said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And yet I say to you to turn the other cheek. It's windy out here. Uh, you've heard it said you shall love your you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. What is Jesus doing here? Well, he's actually doing what he always does in all of his teachings. Jesus is transitioning people from law to grace. You see, the thing with the law is, is that the law only has the ability to deal with consequences to actions already taken. If you break the law, then this is the result of it. But Jesus looks at the motive of the heart, and he says, if we deal with the motives of the heart, if we deal with the anger, you won't even ha ever want to murder. If we don't lust, you won't commit adultery. See, Jesus is always taking things deeper into a whole nother level. And he's wanting us to say, let's look at what the Father can do for us to fix us on the inside, to take care of those things that are deep down in us so that we don't have to worry about the external. That will kind of take care of itself once we deal with the inside. Jesus had things to say about that. We might get to that later when we talk about bowls being washed on the inside and then automatically being cleaned on the outside. So anyways, I hope you get something from this parable. I hope you understand a little bit about that. And if you don't, leave a comment. You know, I want people to understand the difference between grace and law because that's what Jesus wanted people to understand. Anyways, if you like this teaching, you can see more of us on YouTube. Our handle is at Reborn Church Jacks, or you can go to our website, RebornJacks.com, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.